What's up guys? Hope you've been playing some good pickleball lately. If you haven't, then this new paddle from Gamma might be the one for you. Today's review is on the RFC Gamma Airbender 16 and is one of the most unique and innovative paddles that I play with today. I'm stoked to see that Gamma took the leap to try something outside the norm of what we typically see in pickleball paddles. Let's take a look and see why this paddle is so special. Gamma decided they wanted to come up with a different way to customize a paddle through different weights that you can place in the throat and the end caps. These two different weight systems are the shock busters and the weighted end caps. Initially, I thought that this was going to be pretty gimmicky and just another way to market a new paddle, but I was wrong. Both of these additional weight systems make the paddle feel and play different. The shock busters are made of a soft, rubbery material. When you feel and hold them, you can tell that Gamma put a lot of thought into these and that they are made well. The shock busters come in a pack of three and all have different weights. They come in at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 ounces. I like that they have different weight variants, but one of the main problems I have with these weights are that they don't weigh enough. Even with the heaviest shock buster at 0 0.3 ounces, it doesn't make a big difference. There is a difference, just not groundbreaking. If Gamma comes out with more weight variations that are heavier, that would truly be a game changer. The other issue that I have with the shock busters is the way that they fit into the centerpiece of the paddle. When you insert them initially, they feel snug and secure, but if you start driving the ball a bunch with this paddle, they will actually start to come out of place. I've tried hitting drives with all three different weights and had the same result each time. This is a brand new concept and don't expect Gamma to nail it perfect first time trying, but something to work on for sure. But let me be clear and say that this doesn't make it unplayable. I played many games with the shock busters in and it never had it fly out of the paddle, but I found myself having to move it back into place in between points. I think Gamma did something special with these shock busters though. If they make them heavier and have a more snug fit, it would be perfect. It would replace the need to add lead tape to paddles for the majority of players. All right, let's talk about the end caps now. They come in three different weights, just like the shock busters at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 ounces. These are much harder to install and remove than the shock busters. Gamma does provide this nifty metal tool that allows you to pry out the end caps once placed in the paddle. You do have to be careful to make sure that you're getting under the metal ring underneath the end cap weight when prying it off, or you will absolutely crack the plastic mold of the weighted end cap itself. Through my play testing, I did this twice um, before I learned how to take it out properly, you know, consecutively. Once again, this is a really cool concept. These weights in the end cap is designed to change the balance of the paddle, meaning that the more weight you put down there, it will make the paddle feel more whippy in hand. It doesn't change the swing weight of the paddle at all, just moves the balance of the paddle closer to the handle. Playing with this on court, it took me a while to even notice the difference with this having in place or not, but there is a small difference. Did they make me play better or worse? It did neither really. They just don't weigh enough to make a meaningful difference. I hope that when Gamma comes out with more of these, they will have heavier variations. If I had to choose between getting the shock busters or the end caps, I'd get the shock busters. They had a much bigger impact on play than the end caps did. All right, let's chat about how this paddle feels. Off the bat, I started pulling comparisons to the Selkirk Lux paddles, and I think that's exactly what Gamma was going for. This is the closest thing that I play with to the Selkirk Lux paddles. The Airbender does not have as much dwell time as the Lux paddles, and it's a bit stiffer, but not necessarily in a bad way. More of like a crisp, responsive kind of way. The sweet spot on the Airbender is large for an edgeless paddle, and did see it grow in size ever so slightly with the shock busters in place. Where this lacks in feel is towards the top of the paddle. The sweet spot just disappears and the balls will die on your paddle there. It's the first inch and a half of the top of the paddle that plays this way and then the nice feeling sweet spot starts below that. But the control with this paddle is fantastic. Playing any kind of soft game with this is top tier. It was shocking how easy it was to hit dinks, third shot drops, and resets with this paddle. This gave me the same kind of confidence dinking in the kitchen that the Selkirk Lux paddles did. You feel like you could dink for an hour without missing a single shot. Third shot drops feel the same way. 
it was easy to dial in the depth of my top spin drops with this paddle. That's thanks to the crisp responsiveness of the paddle, but also to its great spin. Just from playing with this, you can tell that this gets 2000 plus RPMs, and that just makes every single shot so much easier. Gamma knows that the weakness of all control paddles is that there isn't much pop or power. Gamma tried something to solve this issue that I actually liked quite a bit. When you hit a ball hard, the face will stiffen up and actually give you some power. But when the face stiffens, the nice crisp responsiveness you get when hitting control shots, they kind of disappear. It feels like you're hitting the ball with an actual board. There is minimal feel off of serves and drives, but it's a double-edged sword. Yes, it gives this control paddle some power and pop, but the feel goes completely out the window. If you don't hit the middle of the sweet spot when driving the ball, I'd say it feels very jarring through the hand and the arm. I'm definitely not a fan of how this feels, but because it does get great spin, it can actually get by when hitting drives and serves. Hitting volleys and getting into hands battles is the same kind of story. The face stiffens up and gives you some power, but not more than you put into the shot yourself. This is the first time I've played with a control paddle that has this kind of property, and I'm glad that Gamma is trying out new things. If they can figure out how to make it not feel so aggressively stiff when hitting drives, serves, volleys, then this is going to be a force to be reckoned with. There will be so many companies that will copy the Shockbuster and end cap weight idea. I think this will actually become somewhat standard across the board moving forward with every pickleball paddle company. Gamma just needs to give an option to have the weights heavier and I believe that they will in time. For a control paddle though, this is fantastic. I played amazing with this paddle when I slowed the game down for sure. And for $200, this paddle is definitely worth it to me. The Shockbuster and end cap weights are both $25 extra though. And like I said earlier, if I had to choose one or the other, I would pick the Shockbusters. The real question is, would I play with the Gamma Airbender at $200 or the Selkirk Lux paddles for $250? I would have to go with the Airbender. I play the soft game just as well with the Airbender as I do with the Lux paddles. And for $50 cheaper, you can't really beat that. If you are thinking about getting a control paddle, I highly suggest that you look into getting this one. And if you're going to pick this up, make sure that you use our discount code BRIONISPB at checkout to save yourself some money and to help us continue to make better and better powder reviews for you guys. That's it for this review, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.